Hi folks, Ricky Tang here. Bit of shed time, first bit of proper maintenance, I think, in my new shed. Looking forward to it. Although it is absolutely sweltering in here. Now I've got a fan behind me, but if I turn it on, the noise from the fan will ruin the audio. So I'll be stopping the video probably several times so I can turn the fan on and cool down. <laughs> anyway, I want to replace the uh, worn out brake pads on my uh, Hayes caliper. Now, I've already done the uh, other side just to make sure that I knew all the steps really and I didn't fall into any traps. It went okay, probably took an hour longer than it should have, but we're just about there. These two uh, brake pad pins, let's crack them a little bit. Now, I was warned potentially that there are R clips or some sort of little bit of extra metal work along the length of the pins. Turns out on this caliper, there are no pins along the inside of the main sliding pins. There's no extra clips or anything, but there are sur clips on the outside of the brake caliper on the back end, which I'll show you shortly. So I've got to crack these. I might as well loosen them off while the caliper is nice and solid against the, uh, against the bike. Then take off the main um, caliper bolts. Oh, almost forgot. Let's get some uh, painter's tape around the wheel because for the other caliper, I did knock it against the wheel more than once. So uh, there's not a lot of clearance there to play with. We have these little, oh, I can show you on this camera, I think. These little uh, star shaped bolts. And we have the main caliper bolts. Now what I found is that uh, the perfect star shaped socket that will fit on top of those, believe it or not, is a half inch, sorry, quarter inch uh, socket. That fits over those bolts really well with basically no appreciable um, slack at all. I think that's five pointed, uh, six pointed. I was under the impression that the main bolts here were 13 mil. However, I found that a half inch socket is actually perfect on those and 13 mil gave me a little bit of slack so half inch on those quarter inch on those they will see you right so let's uh crack these two off a little bit first done already loose just one little turn now before i embarked on the first caliper um, i sought some advice because i wasn't really sure what i was doing and i was worried whether i'd be competent enough to actually do this at all now, um, I spoke to my YouTube friend, Carl, and his channel is called Just The Way It Is. And uh, he's got 40 years experience in the automotive trade. Uh, basically, he knows his onions. So he gave me some advice uh, on uh, what to do with these calipers and how to get them off the bike. So, um, yeah, using his advice and a little bit of information from the um, user manual for the bike and a bit of YouTubing, we should be good. Now. One bit of advice that Carl gave me and also was in the manual is before you extract the caliper, once you've taken the bolts off, give the caliper a little bit of a twist left and right, kind of towards you and away from you, a little bit of a twist up and down as well. Not by a lot, just enough to aid you to extract the caliper. I want to clean the pistons first and then I want to put the, the brake grease on there, the PTFE on these pistons. So I don't want them to disappear inside the caliper, not yet, not until I clean them and put the grease on. These bolts have no traces of um, uh, Loctite or thread lock on them, so I will not be adding any. Oh, before I go any further, sorry, let's remove on this left-hand side uh, the clips that hold the speed sensor in place or the speed sensor cabling. Um, you might think, hold on, the caliper's gonna drop. It's okay, it's actually on dowels. There's some dowels inside the, uh, the main mounting point there. So the caliper is going to be held in place. I think I'll strap this out of the way somehow, bear with, before I remove the caliper. You can see actually before I go any further, there's the dowels that the uh, caliper has been sitting on. So before I pull the caliper back, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a twist against the brake disc to help me remove the caliper and what i've found and i'll probably mention this a couple of times move the caliper up a little bit 
as you pull it away and that seems to help you remove the caliper nice and easily. There are circlips. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that as I'm doing it one handed, it's not very easy. So there are circlips on the end of the uh, pins here which have to come off. I've forgotten how to take it off. And it's too hot. <sighs> Let's go. There you go. That's, uh, I had a real brain fade moment then about how to get this circlip off. I remember explaining it as well when I did it on the other side. Get the open end of the circlip on one end of the plier and the other end of the, the plier on the on the pin and squeeze. So I don't know if you'll see that, but uh, oh look, suddenly very easy. Okay, <laughs> next. Um, loosen the pins and pull them out. So um, there's a metal shim here, one piece of metal. So that's putting pressure, put downward pressure on the brake pads. So I'm going to push in there with my fingers as I undo that pin. One, two. Here we go. I'll come back to these in a minute. I just want to tie up the uh, caliper so um, it doesn't hang by the brake hose. But anyway, yes, here are the new pads. Yeah, they've got a red paint on the edge there, so it's a bit hard to see how much meat there is. Can't really tell that much. Oh, that's fairly stark, I think. Looking at that. So, definitely gone over halfway and I was getting close to the wear markers. The point is here that I've got two track days coming up, one in two days time. So I didn't want to keep punishing these front brakes, <laughs> knowing that the front pads were uh, wearing down. The last thing I want to do is start actually scoring the brake discs on this um, 18 month old bike. So what's the next step? Well, the next step is to give this caliper a clean. Now to that end, I have a big bowl of soapy water. So the trick here is to have the, the bowl or the water level high enough so you can pretty much, uh, you know, get all of the brake caliper in there. So yeah, pretty grotty for starters. Let's get them in there. The idea here is to kind of basically get all the way around the pistons as best you can. Get rid of any of the old contaminants. And the first time I was cleaning the other um, caliper, I was making uh, best efforts not to remove the shim in the middle because you don't really need this metal shim removing but in the end i think it was easier if i did get it removed <laughs> so um let's pop it out one way or the other yeah that's much easier than what i did first time around <laughs> i'll be honest with you i put a little bungee cord around the front brake as a reminder as a warning not to touch the front brake during this process if you're any doubt who really made these BMW branded calipers, Hayes <laughs> make the calipers. Okay, so now the caliper is cleaner. I won't pretend it's thoroughly clean, but I'm so hot <laughs> that uh, I'm not gonna sit here for ages doing a meticulous job on the, uh, on the caliper itself, the pistons. They're the bits that I need to make sure are clean. Oh, also while I'm at it, pins for the brake pads. Okay, so now what? Well, let's get the caliper in the air. Then it needs to be dried. Then once that's dry, we're going to be applying the PTFE uh, grease around the pistons and on the sliding pins as well. I haven't got um, a compressed air line. I think that might be a purchase for my shed at some point. But uh, I've got my compu cleaner, <laughs> motherboard cleaner, and that blows out a decent amount of air. So I'll spend a bit of time blowing the air out of the caliper. And uh, then we'll talk PTFE. So caliper's dry. So next step is to get some PTFE, some of this brake piston, um, brake pin grease, high temperature stuff doesn't doesn't melt, doesn't go runny, um, get it around the pistons and then we'll work on getting the pistons back into the caliper housings fully. Now this uh, brake piston stuff, basically it's deadly. 
you do not want to get this on your brake discs or your brake pads or you will not be stopping so you've got to take extra care about how you apply this and then how you clean the inside of the caliper afterwards let's make my hands extra sweaty by putting them in some gloves so just banging a little bit on the finger hopefully it won't drop i'm gonna put that back on now because of the lack of clearance around the piston i cannot go all the way around the side so i've got a little tool i've fashioned that will help me kind of get this uh, grease down the side of the piston against the housing the bit i can't reach i'm gonna push around with a screwdriver that's got a little bit of um, gaffer tape around the edge so just to help me get into that side you can't see much with these cameras probably but just trying to uh, push some around the side here that's side number one repeat for the other three pistons okay done as best I can so the PTFE applied the plan now is to push the pistons back into the housing. Now to achieve that, what I'm going to do is refit the old calipers. A little trick I got from Carl. Um, put the calipers back in, put one of the pins back in to hold it into place, get it back on the caliper and then rotate and manipulate the caliper to push the pistons back into the caliper altogether. Then we'll bring it back out, get brake cleaner on it, clean up any PTFE residue and from there, we're ready to fit the new pads. One little bit I forgot, that is the uh, pins. So um, yeah, the lighting is not brilliant. Here's the shim, the pointy end of the shim points up towards the uh, bleed nipple. Basically, where would I get it in there? Let's go from there. Oh yeah, you can also see there's two, basically two clips and they go onto the housing on the inside. So let's just get it in there. Can I do it that way? Okay, that's not bad. Oh, look at that. So yeah, just clips over onto the housing like so. That is ready to rock. These set of pistons on the outside here, they went back, I felt them go back quite easily. The other ones, I don't think they travel so far. I don't think they go that far, but uh, We'll try and do a bit more squeezing anyway. I think we're good now. So, back out comes the pin. Back out comes the pads. And then we'll give the inside a good wipe with a brake cleaner. So liberal coating of uh, brake cleaner in here. Of course, that'll also get rid of some of the grime that I didn't reach earlier on. Okay, I'm fairly satisfied now that the inside's free of nasties. So um, let's go for the new pads. Now, wash hands, then we'll go for it. Before. I uh, refit the caliper. What I'm going to do is take a Scotch Brite pad and give the disc a wipe. I shall show you that now. You may be able to see that it looks like there's fingerprints on this disc, and really that's just contamination from the uh, brake pads. My attempt on the other disc earlier on with one of these was not entirely successful maybe not even successful at all because at the end of it I didn't really reduce the amount of visible contamination but I tried and I got arm pump <laughs> doing it what I'm going to try and do is go at this um, disc with small circular motions as I rotate the wheel I'll do. Next, um, brake cleaner and um, go around the disc with a rag. As you can see, <laughs> that's a lot of a lot of rubbish. Okay, now um, what we're going to do here is 
not tighten up the bolts fully, not yet. I'm going to help the caliper sit properly flush against the brake disc. What we're going to do here is with the bolts not quite tight, we are now going to apply a bit of pressure through the brake lever, which you can't see. What you might be able to see is the caliper move a little bit as I start to apply pressure. Well, I didn't move too much, if at all. But what I'm going to do here is give, actually I'm loosening it up a little bit more, give the caliper a bit of a jiggle as best I can. nice and solid so just help it find its natural position against the brake disc is the intention there we'll talk rating for this for these bolts on my bike uh, 38 newton meters we are done we have got new brake pads on our haze calipers for BMW 1250 range what I'll do is uh, see if I can find a list of um, BMW models that have got haze calipers. They might not all be exactly the same model as this one. That's the problem. They might be slightly different with different bits of hardware around the sliding pins and the shim. But hopefully this uh, little tutorial and demonstration of replacing the brake pads will be useful for a lot of people with uh, this era of BMW. This process would have been a lot more stressful if it wasn't for the invaluable help of Carl from just the way it is. Please take a look at his YouTube channel. He uh, has a BMW 1250 GS now. Before that, it was a 1260 Multistrada, I think. Yeah, very knowledgeable gentleman. Um, very friendly as well. Very helpful. Um, I'm sure he'll help you out. If you just want to give him a call, speak to him directly. His number 059. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> that wasn't his real number. So uh, yeah, anyway, he's been very much a big help for me. So perhaps I didn't do maybe as thorough a job as I could have um, in cleaning the calipers. Um, but, you know, the bike's only 18 months old. They weren't that grubby anyway. And besides, it is hella hot in here. Can't tell you how hot it is. Actually, I can tell you how hot it is. Hold on. It's 39.3 Celsius. <laughs> So the next time you'll see me probably be um, with a video at Alton Park or possibly somewhere further up the country as I plan to take a tour north after Alton Park this week, weather permitting. So uh, until then folks, take care. I'll see you in another video. Ta-da. Bye.